uh, I will be talking about the uh, role of uh, immunotherapy in uh, HCC. So uh, this is uh, William uh, Coley. This is uh, a guy who, who is now receiving a lot of appreciation. Uh, 100 years since he started to, to think about the role of immunotherapy in, uh, in treating cancer. So it's more than, it was in 1891 when he started to use uh, unusual approach at that time when he inject people with incurable cancer with bacteria to induce the immune response. And he approved at that time there is uh, some response. So uh, the interesting thing about him, it's, it's, it's not only about his novel discovery, but he was an orthopedic surgeon. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. So uh, immunotherapy cancer drug held as a game changer, and as you know, all of us as oncologists, we agree that really immunotherapy uh, is a real game changer in our era. In terms of mechanism of action, side effect, the way how we... Uh, Just uh, hold it down. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So again, as I was uh, saying, the immunotherapy is a game changer in, in a lot of aspects in our uh, oncology care nowadays in terms of understanding the mechanism of action of drugs, dealing with side effect, assessing the response. Uh, and uh, of course, the most important thing, the durable response that we see in, in different aspects of, uh, of uh, different solid cancer. <coughs> in addition to that, in terms of side effect, I think we used to have the classical teaching of oncological emergency that includes spinal cord compression, fibrinotropenia. neutropenia. But I think with immunotherapy, we start as oncologists to know more about more serious side effects like fulminant hepatitis that can have colitis as a new uh, oncological emergency that we should be aware of. So in terms of uh, HCC, when we want to talk about the role of immunotherapy, as, as you can see in this uh, left uh, arm here, there is, there is a lot of gene mutation that can be seen in HCC. Unfortunately, there is uh, no targetable uh, agent. And if you compare it to the other malignancy and other solid organ, there is uh, some form of mutation that we have already established target, uh, targeted treatment or at least that we know they are responding to some sort of, of therapy. So this is one of the challenges that we don't have a driver mutation in patient with uh, HCC. And as uh, Dr. Ashwag went over uh, the systemic approach in patient with HCC, again, for us as a medical oncologist, and even when we talk to the patient, the benefit is modest, and it's not really robust to, uh, to encourage uh, us as a medical oncologist to use it in a patient who have two problems, they have a liver disease and on top of that they have a cancer. So it's a really a challenging situation. So moving forward, sorry. The role of immunotherapy and uh, or the idea of uh, immune response in patient with HCC, it's not new. So this was a publication in 98. So they looked for patient with restricted HCC and they looked to the CD8 T cell infiltration and they came up with a score for low or, or high infiltration of, of T cell. And as you can see, the recurrence rate with those with high infiltration with T cell was less compared to those with normal infiltration with T cell. This was duplicated in another publication. When they looked to the interior part of the tumor and the margin of the tumor, and it showed consistently the same, same result. And again, the role of immunotherapy is not new in HCC. So this publication was in 1989, and they looked to the role of alpha interferon in comparison to dexorobicin. We know that uh, HCC is a chemoresistant, but this is, was the, the treatment that they used at some point. And uh, because of toxicity, another two trials done, and this, was appro this approach is, is, was not adapted. So moving forward, over many years, different approach in, in, in patient with HCC uh, has been implemented, or at least studied, uh, including immune checkpoint inhibitor, uh, tumor ablation, oncolytic virus, and there are ongoing trials in different of this aspect, but I'm going to focus about immune checkpoint inhibitor. So this is T cell. It's regulated by activating signal and inhibitory signal. And in order to stimulate the T cell to do its job, either you have to inhibit the inhibitory signal or boost the activating signal. 
So CDL uh, A4 and PD1, it's what we know now, and we what we uh, already understand a lot about it in terms of uh, treatment and uh, clinical uh, beneficial. So phase two trial, this is actually one of the uh, early signs about the role of immunotherapy in patients with HCC. So they included only patients with chronic hepatitis. It's a small number of patients. They included about 40% of patients, they were child B. And the, the patient previously treated with sorafenib or systemic uh, chemotherapy. And they have a measurable tumor. And they gave them a trimolumab in a dose of 15 milligram per kg every 90 days. So this is one of the interesting findings. The overall response rate was 17.6%. But the other interesting finding that the viral load of HCC also decreased during the course of the treatment, which was correlated with the response to the, to the treatment. Again, this is the, uh, the, the, the disease control rate here is 76. So most of the patients, they achieve stable disease. Three develop progressive uh, partial response. And uh, four develop a progressive disease. So this is opening the gate for a uh, bigger uh, trial, and uh, nivolumab was studied in, um, in advanced hepatocellular carcinoma. This was the Checkmate 040. It was an open label non-comparative study. It's phase one, then uh, go, they went with the dose expansion to have a phase two study. So they included patient with uh, viral hepatitis, and they included <coughs> patient with HCV infected and hepatitis B uh, infected. And as you can see here, they went with the dose up to 10 milligram in patients without viral hepatitis, and they were careful about the dose with those with HCV and hepatitis B virus. And <laughs> after that, they expand the study and they included 214 patients, and they uh, classified them based on their sorafenib untreated or intolerant sorafenib progressor, and based on etiology of, of their uh, tumor. This is the inclusion criteria for the patient, and as you can see here, most of the patients, they have a uh, good uh, child score, less than seven, and when they went to the dose expansion phase, they uh, limit this to less than six, so uh, we can see it's only child A uh, patient, and they have to get effective antiviral therapy required in HBV uh, cohort. Their primary endpoint, as with any phase one study, to assess the safety and tolerability, and the, in the expansion phase, they look for the overall response rate. So this is the uh, baseline uh, characteristic of, of the patient. The, the old patient were 262. The, uh, most of the patient, they received some form of uh, systemic therapy, mainly sort of 76% of, um, of them, they received treatment. About 70% receive uh, sort of NIP. And as you can see here, few number of patients, they were a child score more than six. So this is just to summarize the adverse effect, the safety profile of nifilumab in, in patients with HCC because it was a major concern in someone with abnormal liver function already. Some of them, they have hepatitis B. So actually the safety profile was comparable with other uh, safety profile of nifilumab in other solid malignancy. However, there was some slight elevation on the uh, AST and uh, ALT. But there is no actually major difference. So now, this is the uh, term of efficacy. As you can see here, this is the objective response, 20% of all patients. Actually, three patients achieve complete response uh, with the treatment. Most of the, 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 the rate of disease uh, control was about, uh, what is it? The, the rate of disease control was uh, 64%. So most of the patients achieve disease control rate. And if you look here to the overall survival of six months and uh, nine months, 83% uh, of patients were alive in six months, and 74% at nine months. And, and of course, we are talking about second line HCC uh, patient, and these are really uh, encouraging. Moving uh, forward, this is the uh, time to uh, response and the duration of response based on etiology. And I think it's comparable between the different arm and sorafenib naive, sorafenib experienced, and sorafenib experienced in the expansion uh, phase. So the uh, duration of response range from 17 uh, to 19 uh, month. And as you can see here, based on etiology, most of patients, they achieve disease control rate. And the, some of them, they, they have a partial response, which, which was not really significant between the uh, 
to uh, etiology, hepatitis B and C. So this is the, uh, what they call the spider plots. So many of the lines, as you can see here, depend on the, uh, the responder. But what I want to just to focus here that for those who achieve response, as you can see here, the, the response is durable, which is something unique to the uh, immunotherapy in general. And when you look here to up to 18 month or 15 month in patient with HCC in a second line setting, actually it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something robust. Now, this is more about the uh, etiology of uh, an affected and uh, seropharin, sorry, seropharin progressor or seropharin intolerant patient. And again, it's just to show you the, 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 the duration of uh, or the duration of response in targeted lesion that it was last and if it's happened, it's durable. Again, it's the same, just it's all going into detail with about hepatitis C <coughs> virus or hepatitis B virus. I think all of them, they, they receive the benefit regardless of, of uh, etiology. <coughs> now, the overall survival, as you can see here, in the dose expansion uh, arm, it was um, 13 months. And uh, in the dose escalation, it was 15 months. And this is really a significant uh, outcome on, on, on patient, and I don't think any of, part of, the, of the study that Dr. Ashwag presented this morning uh, reached to this number. The good thing about uh, BDL1, BDL1 uh, expression, it's very good outcome for us as an oncologist because we, we, we diagnose HCC mainly radiologically and if, if it was BDL1 uh, uh, response dependent, that we, that's mean that we have to do biopsies for our patient. Now, uh, the, regardless of the PDL1 expression, the response uh, was uh, the same regardless of PDL1 expression. This is just an update of, about the survival, which saw consistent result uh, on, uh, on the median overall survival in both the seropinib experienced and seropinib uh, patients. So mainly based on the, this study, the FDA approved the nivolumab at a dose of 240 milligram. Uh, every two weeks in a uh, patient progressed on uh, sorafenib as a second line in patient with HCC. And based on this finding as well, the phase one, uh, sorry, phase three study in the first line setting is uh, undergoing. And uh, hopefully this will change the paradigm of uh, treating uh, the population with uh, HCC from tyrosine kinase inhibitor with modest benefit to the era of immunotherapy. Now the second study was presented recently in, uh, in ASCO 2018. It looked for pembrolizumab in patient with advanced hepatocellular carcinoma and previously treated uh, patient with sorafenib. It's a phase two study. Uh, they included patient with uh, pathological confirmation HCC. They have a good performance status and the predicted life expectancy was three months. So the comparison was just uh, supportive care. And uh, if you can see here, they included one or four patients. And as, again, consistent with the result of uh, nivolumab, the disease control uh, rate was uh, 64 per 61%. And uh, if you will go here, uh, you will see that one patient we are able to achieve complete response. Uh, 34 uh, patients developed progressive disease and a good number of patients achieved uh, stable disease. This is uh, to show you the treatment exposure and response duration. Usually you will see the response within eight weeks of treatment. And the arrows, small arrows here that you see that it's indicating ongoing treatment. And we are talking here about 36 weeks and here about 48 weeks. So 17, um, 17 patients responded, 16.3, uh, the, the, the overall response rate. The median time to response was 2.1 month and the response duration more than six months is 94%. Uh, and this is really another uh, good result. Uh, uh, again, I'm showing you it was consistent with the nivolumab study, the response in hepatitis B or hepatitis C virus or an infected individual, they all respond and benefit from the, the treatment. This is the early analysis of the progression-free and overall survival, which we, we just went over uh, in a few minutes. Now, when, when we uh, look to the management of, of patients with HCC, there are different other options, different thought and theory about the role of uh, local treatment in addition to immunotherapy. So if you 
if, if there is some theory that you look to the acute immunological response that happened with ablation or embolization, uh, with the theory that it induced hypoxia and uh, stimulate the uh, immune response. And if you give them immunotherapy on top of that, this will increase the chance of, of uh, response. So based on this theory, there are ongoing trials as well that look for transarterial chemoembolization uh, in addition to uh, nivolumab. Uh, and still uh, ongoing study, we don't have uh, data about it. But it will be also an interesting uh, thing to know. By this, I conclude. Thank you very much.